yourself there. So if you want the shiny red bicycle, you have to see yourself riding it, feel it, you know, feel your legs going up and down on the pedals and see it and, and immerse yourself in the emotion of what it feels like because right. the universe responds more to emotion and how things feel than just thoughts. And the power of the universe and its responsiveness to things are amazing. Um, one of the most important books ever written um, is this one. This is perhaps the single most important book written in our lifetime. Um, William Tiller? Yes, it's written by William Tiller, Walter Dibble, and Michael Cohane. They're mm -hmm. three scientists. Um, William Tiller has been presented in a lot of the documentaries, movies about human potential. He was in The Secret. He was in uh, The Living Matrix. And he's certainly one of our leading minds. Um, but this is a book about the research that these guys did where they programmed a simple electronic circuit with intention. They had four different healer type people who programmed their intent into this little electronic gizmo mm -hmm. and it's basically just an oscillator and it has a little you know electronic circuit in it a very simple device then they put the device into a room and then the device would then affect the energy information around it so one device for example was programmed to increase the ph of water mm -hmm. so they put it in the room and the ph of the water went up another one was to increase enzyme activity. Another one was to improve the growth rates and the hardiness of fruit fly larvas. Um, and <clears throat> the science is meticulous, it's definitive, it's proven. Yeah. So that's quite the shift from the mechanical universe, mm -hmm. <laughs> the mechanical an, physics. Right, to an informational universe. And the true nature of our reality has deliberately been kept from us to a certain extent. Um, you don't necessarily want the monkeys to have the keys to the Lamborghini um, because they may figure out how to start it up. <laughs> and so... And crash the car. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Those monkeys. Yes. <laughs> so the, the true nature of our reality has has been kind of kept hidden from us for a very, very long time. We've been given this very simple mechanistic physics that we've been operating on for a long time. Quantum physics didn't come about until the early 1900s. Um, and it's developed... What? 1900s? That was, you know, 100 but, years ago. <laughs> well, right, but still. It's and it's still new? Yes, it's still new. It's taken a long time to sink in. <laughs> <laughs> and but what quantum physics teaches us is that the world around us, the, the universe, the stuff that we're made of, the stuff that makes up the universe, responds to us. It there's much more to it than just simple mechanistic, you know, cause and effect and um, chemical reactions and that sort of thing. It's we have the power of our mind mm -hmm. at our disposal. Yes, we just and, need to harness it. Right, and the research in this book proves that absolutely. And the studies have been replicated. Um, I'm in the process myself now of um, developing a intention device, the same circuit that's in here in the schematics somewhere. Um, now. How is this related to, for example, um, the random event generator? Okay, here's the schematics. Um, well, the random, random event generator has been used to measure quantum interactions. When the universe around us, when the quantum field that kind of surrounds us um, mm -hmm. goes out of random, what a random event generator does is it spits out random events or random numbers. So it's like chaos. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Um, and from our perspective, 
because we don't have the computing power to identify the patterns to us it looks like random mm -hmm. um, it probably really isn't random there's probably a lot of order and intelligence there but it's just too complex to follow right but for us it appears to be random um, now when there's a significant interaction between mind and matter or the quantum field what happens is that randomness stops it stops being random and it goes into non-randomness so okay. that's why random event generators are important is because they can help identify when something significant has occurred when a significant intera interaction has occurred between mind and matter or the quantum field um, I, I have a lamp Mm -hmm. And um, it changes, I still have it, it changes colors when somebody walks into the room. Right. Or if my cat is lounging nearby, the, the lamp especially responds to the cat for some reason. Mm -hmm. It just flashes colors like that. Or it tries to match the color that I'm wearing on that day. It's really strange, but I love the lamp. And I was told it has a little random event generated inside. Right. Okay. Yeah, and the colors change when the uh, random event generator is no longer um, producing random numbers or random events. Okay. And, and by the way, that lamp is by Sauron. Sauron, right. Yes. You can buy one at www.psy. <laughs> L E R O N dot com. It's very pretty, even if you can't make it change colors very often. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you, maybe you can bring your lamp to our next visit. Sure, I'd love to. Yes. So, to kind of recap what we've discussed so mm -hmm. far, the steps that a person can take to consciously evolve is number one, accept responsibility for who you are. For the choices that you make for your lot in life. I'm in charge. Right. Yes. Number two is define who you are here and now. And that includes all of the good as well as the bad. And especially the bad because as long as you're in denial, as long as you're suppressing things, as long as you're dissociating part of yourself saying, that's not me, mm -hmm. then you can't fix it. You know? Right. If, if, right. if it's hidden away, locked away somewhere in a box then it's not going to be part of the program. It's like a leaking pipe somewhere in the basement. You don't want to think about it. You have to fix it, but you right. don't want to think about it. And you keep getting this huge water bill, but it's not enough to make it go down and have it fixed. Right. Because <laughs> it's too embarrassing or <laughs> scary. <laughs> right. And sometimes it takes a lot of effort to dig up all of those scary things. Well, maybe... Um, if people have a little help, maybe a friend sure. who could help them out, like a friendly EFT practitioner or sure. a quantum touch healer. <laughs> yes, and maybe it will take an EFT session to just even get to step two. Yes. Um, and then step three, of course, is to clearly define who you want to be, the perfect ultimate you, the characteristics that that person will have. And, and it's not being vain if I say, this is what I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, and but it shouldn't be about um, physical aspects necessarily. It's about who you are as a person. Um, and th those those aspects will change as you use EFT or mm -hmm. Quantum Touch, for example. You will suddenly go for less materialistic things and aim for the spiritual yeah. stuff. Right. Quality instead of material mm -hmm. quantity. <laughs> right. And... And it's important that you visualize yourself being that person. And that's something you need to do every day. When you wake up in the morning, focus on the new you. Feel what it's like to be that person. Be that person in your mind. And feel everything about that person. Um, Will it make me lose my friends? <laughs> maybe the ones that you don't need anymore. <laughs> maybe the people that you only thought were your friends and who were just there as long as you serve their needs, um, people who don't really care about you. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can find new friends. Yes, people who actually do care. <laughs> oh, good. Aren't just there because you're like them, or because right. you do something for them, or because you make their bad habits seem okay because you have the same bad habits, perhaps, or um, 
Or you're, you're a bigger mess than yeah, you think they are, so right. <laughs> they feel better around you. Yeah, a lot of people choose friends that are, they kind of, on some level, may consider them to be lesser so that they can feel like more. Um, right, right. So, yes, dysfunctional relationships may evolve or may be replaced by more functional relationships. Well, that's great. So, but you have to be open if... If you want to be this new person, but you're not willing to make any changes, then it's not going to happen. You have to be open to creating the changes. You have to go the whole way. Right. And your focus has to be on becoming that new you. And it may seem a little selfish, but if you don't evolve, then you can't help others as much. Sometimes the single most powerful thing we can do to help the world around us, to help our family and our friends, is to become a better person. Um, because as each one of us steps forward, then we can all step forward. Um, we have to evolve as individuals so that we can evolve as a species. As you know? a mass. Yes. yes. Um, and of course, then the next step after that is to learn to manage your mind and emotions, um, manage your thoughts and manage your feelings. But it's usually emotions that drive the thoughts um, to a great extent. So. It's not enough to just say, okay, I'm not going to think about that. Well, if your mind keeps thinking about something, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you there's... You should pay attention. Right. right. So it's important to listen to yourself, listen to your mind, listen to all those little stray th thoughts, even if they seem kind of silly or stupid or inappropriate, um, undesirable or whatever, until you start accepting them and owning them and allowing them to legitimately exist and then getting to the root cause of them, change can't occur. So sure. you have to develop a good dialogue with yourself. Um, doesn't mean you should wander around in public talking to yourself, but you need to have that inner dialogue going and sometimes journaling is extremely helpful. Um, you have to express yourself in some way, whether it's writing, talking to people, um, talking to yourself. Tapping. Yes. <laughs> Tapping, of course, is a good way to bring up emotions to the surface and then release them, release the hold that they have on us. Um, so EFT is an important part of that. Um, and <clears throat> the meditation is important. Um, and also, you know, learning to breathe properly is important. You know, we should breathe with our diaphragm, not Where's with our the chest. Diaphragm? So the diaphragm is below the lungs, and that's mm -hmm. the muscle. So you basically you kind of push your tummy out to breathe in, and then just relax. Most people breathe with their chest muscles or their back. They it's what's called thoracic breathing versus diaphragmatic breathing. And when a person breathes properly, something kind of magical happens. They're it's much slower. Mm -hmm. And also your heart rhythm. So your heart will normally vary. It speeds up, it slows down, it speeds up, slows down. One of the best measurements of physical, emotional, mental well-being is heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. The more it speeds up and slows down, the more stress there is on the person. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe properly, what happens is your breathing starts to become in sync with your heart which then causes a synchrony in the brain waves too. So your whole body mind starts to become in sync and in harmony. And that's a whole other level of consciousness that many people have yet to experience. Is so, this what people do when they do Tai Chi yoga and meditation and things like that? Well, that type of breathing is used in those types of exercises. Um, but to really train yourself to be in completely in sync, completely in harmony, sometimes it requires neurofeedback or whole body mapping where you can have sensors hooked up and then you can actually see on the screen, okay, here's my breathing, here's my heart rate, here's my brainwave pattern. Um, Tell us more about the brainwave pattern. Didn't you, when, didn't you mm -hmm. go to um, have your brainwaves mapped, <laughs> so to speak? Yes, about 15 years ago I was in Eastern Europe and I had an EEG done with a mm -hmm. device called a mind mirror. And mind mirror? Mm -hmm. And the person who was did the hookups and was running the machine, the EEG, which stands for electroencephalograph, um, 
didn't think that the readings were correct. They were abnormal. So then he hooked me up to a different device called the Mind Pyramid. <clears throat> Same thing happened there. So he said, you know, there's something wrong with the equipment or there's something wrong with your brain. This isn't supposed to happen. So I called um, a guy in the United States who sold this type of equipment. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he sold professional clinical grade EEGs and I said, okay, this is what we saw in the mind mirror and I'm told that the human brain can't do this. What's going on? And the guy told me, well, you're just experiencing what are called artifacts because the equipment's faulty or the hookups aren't correct or the person operating it doesn't know what they're doing. Um, just bad readings. So I decided to take a neurofeedback course uh, oh, practitioner's yeah, course, back. yes, that uh, this guy was putting on. <clears throat> so I went, I learned about neurofeedback and learned how to operate the equipment. And then at the end of the course, we all got to get hooked up to the equipment. And then they hooked me up. It and burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but, um, <laughs> but I was able to see, I was able to learn diaphragmatic breathing mm. at that workshop at that course because I could see on the screen you know here's my breathing here's my heart rate here's my brainwave pattern and then they also measured muscle tension and uh, body temperature and all kinds of things and so by seeing it on the screen all of these ways what the different mm -hmm. organs were doing or what was happening in your body were you able to instantly make it harmonious? Or? It took me about 10 or 15 minutes but, and once I found that sweet spot you know once you're there then it's like whoa okay so this is what it feels like and once you've <laughs> got that then it's easier to stay there so you can just recall that feeling of being coherent being in sync and being um, what's the word for it you know just being whole and Having all of your parts working together as a single, you know, harmonious whole instead of fighting amongst yourselves, you know, inside. Right, right. Your brain's doing one thing, your heart's Being doing your own something enemy. else. Right. right. <clears throat> so isn't this neurofeedback used for um, addictions and things mm -hmm. like that? Yes, it, it has a very high success rate for treating all different types of addictions, but for example, alcoholism, it has a 75 to 85% success rate the best that traditional 12 steps